Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I think most of us can agree, 2020 wasn't the best year. 2021 still not shaping up to be that great. I think a lot of us are looking towards the future and hoping for better things, and apparently Autodesk are too, because they just released three of their flagship products, and they're all 2022 versions, so this year... Apparently, it just isn't happening. We're going to go into the future now and look at the three flagship products from Autodesk. The first one is 3DS Max. I keep calling it 3D Studios Max. That's what it used to be called going way back in the day. It uh, really was strongly used in the world of game development. There used to be three major players, Soft Image, XSI, you had 3D Studios Max, and then you had Maya. And Autodesk owned... 3DS Max, or at least they, they bought it very early on. And then over time, they also picked up Maya. And there's a lot of people sitting back going, okay, when are they going to merge these two? And yeah, I'm not going to go down that road, but uh-huh. So that's 3DS Max is one of the programs that was updated today. It's a complete rendering software for uh, games animation, a little bit into the film world. And then we also have Maya upgraded today. Maya definitely got the most love in this upgrade. So if that hypothetical th scenario of who is going to, you know, emerge as the one big ring, uh, my money's on Maya. Uh, but anyways, Maya was really strong in the motion picture world and is getting used more and more and more commonly in the world of game development. It just seems to be emerging as the most popular option of the two. Uh, your opinion, I'd love to hear it down below. Well, it got an update today as well, and so did uh, Motion Builder uh, 3D character animation software. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump in, take a look at the release notes for all three of the updates. Uh, for two of them, it's going to be pretty quick. And for the third one, we're actually going to revisit it because there's more details in a blog. So first off, we have what is new in 3DS Max 2022. And yeah, it's, it's tough. Uh, so we got the Smart Extrude enhancement. So now features two new operation modes with shift drag ex uh, extrusions on editable polys or edit poly modifier. Uh, slice modifier enhancement. Slice modifier has been updated with a number of new features to aid modeling tasks. Symmetry modifier uh, enhancements uh, improved to make modeling faster and easier. Relax modifier enhancements. Uh, extrude modifier enhancements. So we got smart extrude and extrude. I think I left out the smart when I talked the first time. Uh, bake to texture now includes a selection of pre-configured maps to streamline frequent baking operations. Uh, viewport improvements. So now features more control over ambient occlusion and floating viewport windows. And their third-party render arm Arnold Renderer uh, has a bump in the version there. And then we've got some rendering improvements, some security improvements, edit poly modifier enhancements, and auto smooth function improvements. Not really a ton there, but the interesting thing is if you're in this for game development, pretty much everything here is around the modeling world or rendering baking to texture. So this stuff is directly aimed at game developers. And then of course, viewports are kind of fundamental to any program. Uh, so that is what is new in 3DS Max 2022. Nothing to really call your mom about unless, you know, she also has a subscription. Uh, we also have Maya. So Maya 22, definitely more love here. I'm going to actually skip over this. Uh, I will link this in the linked article down below. And I'm not skipping over this because uh, I'm being lazy. I'm actually going to cover it more in depth with a blog post that they did. So we'll just cut past that one. And we will talk about Motion Builder. Motion Builder, they, they kind of didn't do a lot of pretty pictures here. So sorry for the aesthetics here. But Python 3 is now available for Motion Builder and is the default on Windows and Linux. Uh, more powerful command line tools expanded the API there. Uh, new mode in the F curves window. Character extension framework, uh, keyframing, sorry, improvement. Improved UX for auxiliary effectors in character controls. Uh, rela relation constraints, animation layer improvements. Uh, character plate options. Offset and scale, HUD hierarchies in the navigator, better audio display, new undo window, customizable splash screen, faster loading images, uh, Cinema 3D import improvements. Got to keep in mind, uh, Motion Builder is supposed to be agnostic to the tool that you're using, so you use Motion Builder with, uh, you know, Blender or um, Cinema 3D, etc. Uh, story tool fixes, new pivot hotkey, control over crash reporting window. Uh, so, you know, nothing that is going to, again, you're not going to call your dad about this one either. And then we get back to Maya. So Maya obviously is the one in the 2022 releases that got the most love. It's actually kind of interesting. This is from the, uh, the Maya blog. And this is the 3D Studios Max blog. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing about the new Max release, so let's go back. We'll talk about what is new in Maya. Definitely the biggest new things in this release came in Maya. So let's go run on through. One of the big things is USD. It keeps getting more and more love. USD is Pixar's open source format, universal scene description. It is being that it's 
earning that universal moniker because basically every 3D application out there is rallying behind USD as a format. So now in Maya, not only can you load and edit massive data sets at lightning speed, but you can also work directly with the data using Maya's native tools, added tons of ro um, robust referencing functionality, non-destructive data editing workflows, and support for complex variants. So there is a ton going on with uh, USD. Blender now supports USD. Um, NVIDIA's Omniverse project, it's all about USD. It's basically a, a really powerful USD viewer, if you really want to think about it that way. So USD is important, uh, especially in the world of film. Uh, but load and edit massive data sets at lightning speed, seamlessly import and export USD data, preview USD scene structures, support for in-memory USD stages, and outliner experience tailored to USD, new USD layer editor, and open source and customizable. So ships out of box, the, the Maya USD plugin is available as an open source project for you to customize as you need. Uh, the project is available up on GitHub. We'll come back to that in a second. And back to Python. Uh, Python 3 is the new default for Maya on all platforms. I believe they've been adding... Python's been there for a while. They used to have Mel, which is funny because Python was actually the scripting language of choice for soft image XSI, and it seems to have won out in the end. So uh, Python 3 is now the scripting language, which is actually kind of another nice thing going off in a weird tangent. The world of Python got stuck in a rut for years and years and years because there was a, a kind of a civil war between the two people and the three people. And finally, about a year to two years ago, it just seems like three finally won. So uh, everything moving away from the old versions of Python is a nice move, and uh, Maya is amongst them. Uh, so we've also got powerful animation tools, new ghosting editor, cache um, playback support for simulations and dynamics, cache playback support in the time editor, additive animation clips in the time editor, graph editor improvements, uh, modern rigging workflows, component tags, deformer falloffs, solidify deformer, morph deformer, always draw on top attribute, skin binding using proximity wrap. We can also so I will link all this. If you want to jump into any of this stuff with more detail, it'll be linked in the linked article as well. Uh, community inspiring modeling updates. Uh, so there's a new sweep tool, which is actually kind of cool. I think we'll get into more detail in a second. Uh, game vertex count plugin. Uh, so you've got various different engines you can put in. Um, so creates an in a game centric alternative to Maya standard polygon count heads up display. Using this plugin, you can now more accurately estimate how assets in Maya impact in game vertex count budgets before exporting them to game engine targeted for Unity and Unreal. Uh, and create VR for Maya. Create VR is an immersive conceptual design tool that allows you to start the creative process directly in 3D using simple curve and surface tools. You can export form and shape while being fully immersed in virtual reality alongside your art. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, but Create VR does not come out of the box with Maya. To access Create VR, you need to download it from the App Store and install it separately. Once installed, Create VR can be loaded via Maya's plugin manager, but you can basically use a subset of Maya's tools in VR to create in VR. That's kind of cool. Uh, some more uh, Arnold 6.2 rendering compatibility. Uh, this is another neat thing that they're doing here. And the fact that they're investing in, again, more architectural stuff on the one application, but crickets on the other, Again, if one of these is going to survive, I put my money on Maya. Here we've got, uh, they've made improvements to first experience. That sounds kind of weird, but basically you, now when you load Maya, it's faster. So startup time is significantly reduced so you can get to work faster. Improves, um, improved splash screen includes a descriptive progress bar letting you know where Maya is in the startup process. A Maya UI is now only displayed and maximized when idle and ready. And you can now hide the output window unless it's specifically needed. Thank you. I, I really can't stand when you have these output windows that do nothing and that you can't get rid of them. That is nice. Uh, incredibly, oh, Bifrost for Maya. Um, a big update to Bifrost was released on December 8th, 2020, marking a major milestone for visual programming in Bifrost for Maya. Uh, focusing on bringing richer procedural workflows to work areas across the pipeline, this update added powerful scattering, instancing, volume metrics, and FX capabilities to Bifrost. And that's kind of the top level stuff. There is much more in the full on release notes if you are interested. And as mentioned earlier on, they did open source their USD or the Universal Scene Descriptor uh, plugin. It is up on GitHub. Where is the license? That's always one of those things I'm curious with a company like, when I think Autodesk, I don't normally think open source per se. Let's, let's just do a quick search. There we go. License. Is it gonna be like MIT? Is it getting, no. Oh, it's Apache. Ah! 
Good job, Autodesk. I'm proud of you. Have a cookie. All right, so that is it. That is today's update. Again, nothing yet on the 3D Studios Max blog, but if you saw from the release notes of all three projects, by far and away, the 2022 update winner is bah, 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 Maya. And I'm curious to hear what you think. Do you, do you think that Maya is going to just be the future? Because you got to know some HR like bean counter or accountant or a human resource director goes, wait a minute, we have like two companies doing the exact same thing with all of these employees. Why are we paying them? And that's, you know, they've probably had that argument since they first picked them up. But when you see one program get a huge number of updates and then the other one not, it does make you wonder. So I'm curious if you're wondering the same thing. Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.